Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. From now through May 6th, if you use that promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a War of the Spark booster box. See the description below for details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and War of the Spark is now officially legal in the competitive formats. Last weekend being launch weekend was the first time that you could see those cards played in standard events or modern events. We're going to take a look back at the big events from the previous few days and see what kind of role these new cards played. Star City Games held a standard open as well as a standard classic, and they also had a modern open last weekend. We're going to look at the top eights and some of the key decks from those tournaments. Just a quick reminder though, before we get started, today is the last day to use the promo code for Heroes and Legends at Flipside Gaming to be able to get into the drawing for that War of the Spark booster box. So if you still want to do that and haven't done it yet, all the details are in the description below. Without any further ado, let's get into it though. We're going to begin as we always do with standard at the Star City Games Open, and let's look at that top eight and see what happens. First place, second place, third place, Mono Red Aggro, more on that in a second. Fourth place, Esper Control, that also came in seventh place. Fifth place was Slesnia Tokens. Sixth and eighth place was Bant Midrange. So not a ton of diversity here, although I'm not too surprised to see Mono Red Aggro do well this first week, just simply because that is typical for a new standard season. A lot of people are going to fall back on things they know, especially in a big tournament like this. And aggro always does well in the beginning. So this is not out of the ordinary or anything like that. I would like to see a little more diversity than we see here. However, when we get to the Star City Games Classic, and also if you look at some of the decks that just missed top eight, there is a fair amount of diversity even coming out of the first weekend. So that is promising. Let's take a closer look at some of these deck lists. We'll just look at the first place mono red aggro deck. They're all pretty similar. The one thing I got to point out, though, I mean, look at the deck list. A lot of cards you're very familiar with, of course, Goblin Chain Whirler, Fanatical Firebrand, Get Two Lava Runner, so on and so forth. They're all here. But look at the Planeswalker spot. Four copies of Chandra Fire Artisan. I was pretty sure that this is what we would see in Mono Red Aggro, just because it's still very affordable at four mana, and it also keeps the pressure on, but lets you see more cards, exactly what this deck wants to do. In the sideboard, you're going to find Tibalt there, Tibalt Rakish Instigator. Fourth place was Esper Control. Esper Control did very well last season. You're going to notice, though, even though there's a lot of cards that are back again, like Chemistry's Insight, Mortify, so on and so forth, there are a lot of new cards from the new set. Also, I do want to point out that there is a lot of variance between different Esper Control builds over the course of the past weekend, and not necessarily a lot of different cards, but different amounts of the cards, especially the new ones different placement of the cards between sideboard and main, but I do think for the most part this is a good representation of what these decks look like. For more of the spark, we get Narset Parter of Vales, Liliana Dreadhorde General, Dovin's Veto, those three cards you're going to see a lot of today. Tyrant Scorn was here as well. These were found in the sideboard, Ugin the Ineffable, Teferi Time Raveler, Enter the God Eternals, Despark, and Oath of Kaya. Fifth place, Selesnia Tokens. This was kind of the theme for the week. Decks that you're familiar with, kind of, but a lot of new cards being infused into them. This one does feel a little more like the old deck list, though. There's a big exception we'll talk about in just a second. But if you look at the deck list as a whole, you have your Conclave Tribunals, March of the Multitudes, History of Benalia is here, so on and so forth. However, three copies of Gideon Blackblade completely makes sense. Super push card. And another copy in the sideboard to round out your four. Bant Midrange came in sixth place. This deck looks solid last weekend. It uses a lot of cards from the previous standard sets. You got your Frilled Mystics, you got your Hydroid Crisis, Llanowar Elves, a lot of familiar cards, but new ones as well. Vivian Champion of the Wilds, four copies in the main. Teferi Time Raveler, another card you're going to see a lot of today. God Eternal Oketra makes it here too. Sideboard Time Wipe and Dovin's Veto. Time to move out of the top eight and look at some other decks that did well, including Simic Nexus in ninth place. A lot of people thought this deck would have a resurgence with some of the new cards coming in, and it did look good during week one. Even though the Simic versions of this deck did put up the best results overall this weekend, a Bant version put up an extremely good result in the Star City Games Classic, which we'll look at in a few minutes. So the core is still the same. You're going to have Nexus of Fate, four of those, four Wilderness Reclamation, four Root Snare. However, here's the new additions. 
you get Narset Parter of Vals, Tamio Collector of Tales, Callus Dismissal, and Blast Zone. Sideboard Narset's Reversal, Arboreal Grazer. Tenth place was Esper Midrange, another deck that actually looked pretty good going into this weekend. There's a lot of new cards in this one. This deck really feels like kind of a War of the Spark build around deck compared to some of the others we've already looked at. Let's see what's in here. You get Liliana Dreadhorde General, Soren, Vengeful, Bloodlord, Teferi Time Raveler, Enter the God Eternals, Despark, Dovin's Veto. You even get Davriel Rogue, Shadow Mage in the sideboard, and two more copies of Dovin's Veto. Boros Aggro came in 16th place, very similar to the one we saw about a season ago, performed really, really well, was still hanging around last season too. Now, it's mostly white. You have your package here, Benelish Marshals, Andanto Vanguard, Hunted Witness makes it in here, Sky Marcher Aspirant, nothing too crazy, History of Benalia, Legion's Landing, you've seen this deck a million times. Four heroic reinforcements in the main, bringing some red, there's also two Banefires in the sideboard. Let's see what new cards are here though. Law Rune Enforcer makes it in the main. Gideon Blackblade in the sideboard. One more deck from this tournament, Gruel Aggro. And this is very similar to the Mono Red Aggro deck, honestly. There is just a little bit of green in the sideboard. You have Cinder Vines, another card we're going to look at in just a moment. Other than that, though, yeah, it feels like a Mono Red Aggro deck. In the sideboard, you'll find Tibalt, Rakish Instigator, and Domri Anarcha Bolas. Time to move on to the Star City Games Classic Standard event. You're going to see a little more diversity here. The classic event is smaller. People will take more risks usually with this event compared to the open. First place and third place was Grixis Control. Second place was that Bant Nexus deck I mentioned earlier. Fourth place was Esper Control. Azorius Agro fifth. Demir Control sixth. Seventh place, Mardu Judith, of course, also known as Aristocrats. Eighth place, Naya Feather. Very interesting. Naya Feather deck made it there. We'll look at that in just a second. So let's get into the deck list we haven't really seen yet, starting with Grixis Control. Here's that first place Grixis Control build, and this is a deck that I don't think a lot of people are surprised to see do well the first weekend. With Nicol Bolas, Dragon God being out there from the new set, a lot of people just assume that Grixis Control could be positioned pretty well, and they would have been correct. Obviously, the deck did very well in this tournament. We'll have to see how it does going forward, but as you can see here, you got four Nicol Bolas, the Ravager. Those are your creatures in the main a lot of control elements, four copies of a devil in here, but a lot of cards from the new set. Here they are, Ugin the Ineffable, Narset, Parter of Vales, Liliana, Dreadhorde General, Nicobolas, Dragon God, Angrath's Rampage, and Enter the God Eternals. In the sideboard, you'll find another copy of Enter the God Eternals. Second place was Bant Nexus, very similar, of course, to the Simic Nexus deck we saw earlier. You have that core group of cards here, four Nexus of Fate, four Wilderness Reclamation, four Root Snare. Let's look at the cards that came in from the new set. Tamiyo, Collector of Tales, Callus Dismissal, Blast Zone is here. In the sideboard, you'll find Teferi, Time Raveler, God, Eternal, Kefnet, and Dovin's Veto. Fifth place, Azorius Aggro. Okay, not too different from Boros Aggro. This time we're splashing a little blue in. Things like three Deputy of Detentions in the sideboard. You're also going to find a couple Disdainful Strokes. The blue basically comes in to bring some control elements into game two or game three if you need them. Let's see what cards from more of the Spark are here, though. Law Rune Enforcer, Gideon Blackblade in the main. Sideboard, Dovin's Veto. Demir Control did well, too, coming in sixth place. It really held its own without red for Bolas, but there's a lot of other great cards in here, clearly. Again, you have your control elements, nothing too shocking here. You see things like Vraska's Contempt, Chart of Course, Negates in there. But what does the new set bring? Ugin the Ineffable, Narset Parter of Vales, Liliana Dreadhorde General, Augur of Bolas is here, God Eternal Kefnet shows up, Enter the God Eternals, Tyrant Scorn. Sideboard, another copy of God Eternal Kefnet, Finale of Eternity, and Dreadhorde Invasion. In 7th place, Mardu Judith or Mardu Aristocrats. Now, this is a deck a lot of people were hoping could get there, and it did get a push from the set. We'll look at those new cards in a second. And even though it was kicking around last season, it didn't really put up the results a lot of people were hoping. So, this season could be very different for this deck. Let's take a look at the deck generally first, though. For Judith, the Scourge Diva, of course, as one of the main components of this deck. Other cards include Midnight Reaper, a couple of those. You have Footlight Fiend, four copies of that right in the main couple copies of Mortify, a heroic reinforcement shows up here. Let's move on to the War of the Spark cards. 
Soren Vengeful Bloodlord, Grim Initiate, Cruel Celebrant, Dreadhorde Butcher, and Heartfire. Sideboard gives us Tybalt again, Tybalt Rakish Instigator, and D-Spark. Eighth place, here's the Naya Feather deck. Okay, this is kind of sweet. Now, everybody was building around Feather, of course, for Commander. Some of the same principles apply here. They are taking advantage of some good existing cards like Adanto Vanguard, Grill Spellbreaker, for example, Collision Colossus. What does War of the Spark contribute here? You get Dreadhorde Arcanist, of course, Feather the Redeemed, 10th District Legionnaire, Defiant Strike, and Samud Sprint even make it here. We'll move outside the top eight now with Slesnia Angels coming in 12th place. This is a solid build, always was, it will continue to be. This one can sneak up on you. A lot of the old cards are here. Jade Light Ranger, Knight of Autumn, Lanawar Elves, Merfolk Branchwalker, your angels, of course, Resplendent Angel, Lyra Dombringer, Shalai Voice of Plenty. What do we get from War of the Spark? Gideon Blackblade and God Eternal Oketra, very good cards to add to this deck. Sideboard, we get another copy of Gideon, as well as a Johnny the Great Hearted. Salt Eye Midrange came in 16th place, very popular deck last season. Still a lot of the key cards here, things like Jade Light Ranger, Merfolk Branchwalker, Wild Growth Walker. What's new here, though? Tamiyo Collector of Tales in the main. Sideboard Finale of Eternity. Okay, so that does it for Standard. Let's talk about the Star City Games Modern Classic. Here's your top eight. First place, Humans. Second place. Third place. Fifth place, of course. Is it Phoenix? What else? Fourth place, Mono Green Tron. Sixth place, Mono Red Prison. Seventh place, Hollow One. And eighth place, Amulet Titan. Now the big question, how did War of the Spark do in Modern? Well, again, the classic event is a little bit smaller. People will take some risks, and they're trying some new things. So let's see what showed up here. Fourth place, Mono Green Tron. Yep, Mono Green Tron got a little bit of a push from some new cards. I'll let you look at the deck list for just a second. A lot of familiar cards here, obviously. But what's new? Four copies of Karn the Great Creator in the main, also a copy of Blast Zone. Here's the fifth place Is It Phoenix deck. Now, now all these Is It Phoenix decks are running new cards, but this one does have something hiding in the main. Finale of Promise, one copy. In the sideboard, Sahili Sublime Artificer makes it in there. Sixth place, another established deck here with Mono Red Prison, adding some new cards. Again, four copies of Karn, the Great Creator in the main, with a copy of Blast Zone as well. We'll leave the top eight, look at a few other decks. Azorius Control came in ninth place. Yet again, another established deck here. What are people trying out for more of the spark? Teferi, Time Raveler is here, and Dovin's Veto. Out of the sideboard, another copy of Dovin's Veto. 14th place, Mono Red Phoenix. Okay, very similar to Is It Phoenix. That same card is hiding in the main, though. One copy, Finale of Promise. All right, with that being said, that is our look at the big tournaments from the weekend. Hopefully this gives you an idea now of what cards are more of the spark are at least starting to catch on. And it's still early. Obviously, people will tweak. Things will change. Different decks will rise to the top as the season continues. But at least going into week one, these are going to be some cards that are getting hot. So keep an eye on them. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.